of uh, foreign debt repayments, considering the constraints we ex find in the international markets. Uh, the situation in the market is such that the need for such additional instruments is uh, not very high, and therefore the application was restricted. In the uh, remaining parts of the year, our debt repayments, according to the new estimates, will be approximately $40 billion, which is uh, lower than last year, approximately half of the last year repayments. And we believe uh, this level of repayments, our economy can survive uh, inflation, even though it grew at the beginning of the year because of the powerful, however, temporary factors. Uh, including the devaluation of the ruble. But thanks to the adopted measures in the past few months, it, this uh, inflation went down. At this point in time, the monthly and weekly inflation rates went down to those that we saw as average for the past few years. For example, the weekly inflation rate went down from 0 0.5 to 0.50% uh, at the beginning of 2015 to 0.1% in May 2015. We can see that the key rate that we introduced uh, 18 months ago becomes uh, truly efficient for determining the aim of our monetary policy. And it became the main factor determining the interest rates in the money market. We expect a better efficiency and response rate from commercial banks. Uh, this will improve the practical efficiency of our decisions. At this point in time, the exchange rate mechanism is very important, but the interest rate mechanism is gaining in importance. When new significant external shocks are absent, inflation will continue to go down in accordance with our estimates. and we. Uh, still have the tar inflation target of 4% in midterm. This inflation estimate, as well as the decline of uh, inflationary expectations, make it possible for us to go down with the key rate. However, the rate of uh, reduction of the key uh, interest rate, the key rate, um, will take into account the risks that we expect to see in the, cur in the nearest future. These risks include, among other things, the normalization of the monetary policy of in the U.S., uh, the strengthening of the dollar may lead to the outflow of capitals from the developing markets and uh, adding pressure to their currencies, including the ruble. The second risk is the oil price dynamics. The basic scenario uh, is uh, expects oil prices at the level of 60 to 65 dollars per barrel. They are volatile. Uh, they're not predictable. But we know that the oil price, which is a financial asset, may be influenced by the dollar strengthening. A traditional, another traditional risk is a crop yield and the food prices. And we know that it is possible that the regulated prices and tariffs will be reconsidered and there may be indexation-related secondary effects. In spite of these pro-inflationary factors in the past few months, our estimates for the cooling of the economy were quite high, which made it possible for us to go down with a key uh, interest rate. The faster reduction in the interest rate, which many call for, is dangerous in our opinion because inflationary expectations are still high. And a faster reduction of interest rates in these conditions may lead to a new wave of destabilization in the exchange market and the growth of inflation. At this point in time, the inflationary expectations, though lower compared to the maximum peaks, are still high compared to the previous years, as well as compared to the level of expectations, which, in our view, is uh, possible in terms of our midterm target for inflation. The decline in inflationary expectations is the task of prime importance for the monetary policy in the nearest future. We need to create sustainable expectations making sure that the inflation corresponds to the desired targets. Our country has already gone through a number of periods when inflation went down to 5 to 6 percent per year, but the inflationary expectations remained at a higher level, and that d predetermined the behavior patterns of the population and businesses. In the end, that led to a new growth of inflation, to the fact that the relatively low inflation was not stable. stable. We know very well that the higher inflationary expectations, the higher interest rates are, 
and the interest rates at which people are prepared to deposit their savings in the financial system and in the end invest. And uh, that also determines the length of deposits. Therefore, when inflation is high, we cannot expect to see an inf investment oriented growth and long term money in the market. This is why I pay so much attention to the inflation and inflationary expectations because this is the platform for ensuring the in investment oriented type of growth that our country requires. I would now like to say a couple of words about uh, how we're going to ensure financial stability in the short term. The events of the past two years, not only in Russia, but in other countries as well, have confirmed that the level of uh, trust in the national currency and the potential for neutralizing global risks, uh, all these things depend on uh, the adequacy of gold and foreign currency reserves. Uh, this remains the case even under inflation targeting and under floating foreign currency rate. Uh, the size of your resources and your reserves does matter. Our latest experiences have led us to rethink uh, our understanding of the comfortable level at which uh, uh, foreign currency reserves should stay. According to international standards, we have sufficient reserves. They uh, cover over three months of import, short-term debt, as well as 20% of uh, the money supply. Currently, internationally, it is recommended not to use uh, individual adequacy ratios, but rather an integrated index derived from a combination of uh, different weighted uh, uh, ratios. Uh, this. Uh, integrated uh, indicator for Russia stands at about $188 billion US. Uh, the current level is about two times as much. However, we believe that uh, Russia's unique situation is such that we should also take into account the uh, necessity to meet the shock demand as a result of limited access to capital markets, capital outflow. So we should be planning for a longer term than the standard approach to um, reserve adequacy. Therefore, one of the priorities for us for the short term will be to build up uh, in several years our reserves. Uh, in the optimal case, uh, uh, Reserves should be sufficient in order to cover for significant capital outflow uh, for two to three years. This is why, for us, the comfortable level of reserves uh, right now, working for long-term stress situations, uh, uh, of about up to 500 uh, billion. US dollars. Nevertheless, we also think that this reserve buildup should be incremental in such a way as not to contradict the main purpose of the monetary policy, namely to reduce inflation down to 4% in the short term. Our estimates demonstrate that uh, if this process is uh, drawn out, uh, and continues for several years, it may be non-uniform, it may depend on the balance of payments, the level of volatility in the global markets, as well as uh, price stability risks. Uh, that process can be drawn out, and this is why we recently returned to building up our gold and currency reserve. I'm simply explaining to you our logic. Some people interpret our build-up activities as a policy towards uh, maintaining a certain uh, ruble exchange rate in order to sustain budget revenues as well as the potential for exports and import substitution. We're being criticized for abandoning the principles of inflationary targeting and a floating exchange rates. This is not the case even theoretically. In practice, many countries such as New Zealand, Chile, Chile Israel, and Mexico uh, that uh, adhere to inflation targeting used to build up their reserves in the past. So there's no inconsistency here. Realizing the importance of budget revenues and com competitive advantage of the Russian economy, still I would like to note that um, artificial um, repression of the ruble is as uh, hazardous for the economy as uh, um, it's artificial curbing. Uh, artificial curbing is fraught with uh, ruble devaluation because the reserves are not limited, uh, are limited uh, in the case of uh, repression. 
of strengthening negative impacts uh, will manifest themselves as uh, financial bubbles and dollarization of the economy. This transition to a floating rate was a deliberate step that was well prepared. It was this timely transition towards a floating rate uh, that has enabled us uh, to weather the storms of last year. We are not uh, intent on abandoning this course. At the same time, we realize that we are at the very beginning of the new regime. It will need to be seriously adjusted. Uh, um, it will need to be, it, it will require adjustments in the behavior of economic agents, not only the central bank, but the businesses and economic agents as well. Uh, as we uh, you know, wonder at this early stage, we might uh, intervene more frequently with the uh, forex market for the sake of financial stability. Another issue I would like to focus on is the role of the different uh, refinancing instruments that we use and that we have uh, begun to use more actively in these difficult conditions. Uh, the role of these instruments and the impact uh, on monetary policy deserve attention. Currently, we have several such instruments, uh, namely refinancing SME, credits, export credits, credits for investment projects, uh, the so-called project fi finance. In all cases, these specialized tools were introduced in those sectors where the market failed. However, the scope of this instrument does not uh, contradict the monetary policy. Therefore, despite insistent requests, we are not going to expand the use of these instruments because this may compromise the integrity of our monetary policy. Currently, we are harmonizing the terms for these uh, tools, trying to standardize them. And because we are de facto providing uh, attractive terms, so we should be very careful achieving our aims. Uh, recently, we created a mechanism for refinancing small business loans, uh, not only through a specialized bank, MSP bank, but also directly through other banks uh, with the uh, through the credit guarantee agency, as well as uh, a mechanism for microfinance. We believe that uh, project refinance has not justified the associated hopes yet. We introduced it over a year ago. The performance has not been very impressive. We are not going to increase uh, the use of that tool. We will be looking for other options to address situations where the market fails as a result of uh, the lack of long-term liabilities in the banking system. I would now like to focus on this issue. Currently, there are a lot of appeals for the central bank to finance various costs uh, associated, for instance, with uh, additional capitalization, investment projects and so on and so forth. Uh, what is happening is the central bank is asked to finance quasi-fiscal functions. We don't think this is the way to go. The main mission of the central bank is to exercise um, control for the sake of uh, price stability, macroeconomic and financial stability in order to create conditions for sustainable economic growth. Now to the situation in the banking sector. Russia has a banking sector with, let us be clear, with an intermediate level of development. As a result of intensive growth of banking assets in the previous years, in 2014, the assets to GDP ratio was 108 uh, percent as of the 1st of January 2015, which is uh, above the 90 percent indicator which we have in the strategy for the development of the banking center for 2016. By the beginning of May, the uh, banking sector's assets uh, reached 72 trillion rubles. In spite of the challenging environment and the slowdown in economic growth, in overall, the banking sector demonstrates a resistance to financial shocks. The stress text proves that allowing for the additional capitalization measures, the adequacy of total capital, even at, with a tight scenario when the oil price may go down to $40 per barrel, this will be above the regulative minimum, at least 10 percent. 
the additional capitalization is required to, for the banking sector to make sure that there is a dynamics in crediting to the real economy so that they could reach the operational profitability. As was uh, mentioned before, the banking sector has been growing through 2014. Obviously, the situation in 2015 is very different from last year's, but nevertheless, we expect a moderate growth of main parameters of banks. The banking sector dynamics in 2014 uh, has been influenced by the currency, foreign currency revaluation when the national currency exchange rate uh, went down, uh, the nominal indicators of banks went up. And you can see here on the slide some very reassuring data. It is important, however, what is behind uh, those figures. The situation in the banks is basically a mirror that reflects what is happening in the economy. The economic slowdown unavoidably leads to slower crediting and the growth of problem assets. The slowing of crediting in January to April of this year happened not only in the corporate sector, but also in the retail segment. The retail uh, portfolio has been shrinking mostly because of the depreciation of unsecured consumer loan portfolio, which uh, goes down after several years of the boom. This is an expected slowdown, but it is happening faster than we expected. There are true trends combined. There's a uh, shorter supply, the less stimulus to crediting because of the higher risks and some of the measures that were made by the bank, central bank to cool the segment. But there's also a trend on the side of the demand because the real earnings of the population are going down. In our view, this crediting segment will be uh, getting onto the normal path and the rate of its change will correlate better with the nominal earnings dynamics. This normalization of the segment is happening relatively uh, quickly in a tough manner, however, and therefore Bank, the Bank of Russia uh, gives a special focus to banks that specialize in retail. We understand that such banks require additional capitalization. We have uh, gave, given this support to specific credit institutions last year. At the same time, we know that the banking managers need to adjust their business models in order to be more conservative uh, about the risk estimation. Mortgage, which is still the highest quality element in the credit system uh, because there is a lower share of problem loans, and let me tell you that in the past few months, the share has not been growing. So this mortgage crediting experienced a sharp decline in the first months of the year, but it, there is a, a bottoming up. And the program of the government uh, that supports the mortgage programs is uh, one of the reasons. In April, we have seen a certain growth of the mortgage portfolio after two months of slowdown. We believe that the slowdown of this sector will be less than in 2008, 2009, and we expect a full recovery a, a recovery in the nearest few months. We have seen some indicators that the situation is changing in the, the sphere of crediting non-financial organizations. And as always, the most difficult conditions uh, were um, uh, faced. Uh, the, the most difficult situation was for the small and medium sized enterprises. Um, and uh, without the government support, the situation will not change. Uh, when the quality of uh, assets is becoming more important to banks, it is important to have capital cushion to cover for the possible losses. And at the beginning of 2015, we saw an escalation of the situation with the credit and interest rate risks in the banking business. We saw the bad debt uh, reserves uh, increase and uh, uh, we saw that the uh, net interest income went down. Uh, as a result of the four months of this year, we have seen a certain loss in the banking sector. In the second half of the year, we expect a certain turnaround, an improvement in the ratio of uh, interest rate income and uh, expenditures of banks. We believe that the overall financial result at the end of the year will be not as good as last year, but will still be quite positive, approximately 100 billion rubles. And some experts, in fact, give a more optimistic forecast, up to 200 billion rubles. But I would still remain with the conservatives. As of the 1st of May, the banking sector capital 
uh, was above 8 trillion rubles. And the capital adequacy ratio by the beginning of May increased by 12.9 percent, which was supported by the measures taken by the central bank to additionally capitalize banks. And there was also a decision of the central bank to soften some of the regulatory requirements. The capital support from the uh, government side through subordinated credits in January, May, uh, reached 310 billion rubles and uh, 71.5 billion rubles were transferred to three banks from the deposit insurance agency. Uh, so the, there's a 1 trillion rubles uh, uh, that has been allocated, but only 7% has actually been paid. But the idea that this is a possibility has slowed and um, made the market more uh, confident. Uh, as to the regulative requirements, uh, our uh, plans are to get back to the standard regulation by the end of 2015. And it is important that all the banking uh, actors understand that uh, in order to make business plans for the nearest future. One of the most important preconditions for the banking business development in the country is the availability of confidence in the market. And the fact that this confidence is in the market uh, is demonstrated that by the growth of banking deposits. Obviously, uh, the banking system will be trusted only if this banking system opens up its problems. It doesn't cover up. And uh, the lack of uh, response to um, regulatory situation, uh, the fact that financial instability is not uh, made transparent only creates an illusion. On different sides, uh, we can hear that uh, the policy of the central bank is wrong and we should act more quickly. We should not wait for while the problems are accumulating. At the same time, uh, we uh, hear that the, uh, it is difficult to clear the weaker agents and that uh, undermines the trust of banks. Let's start with the uh, problem of taking the financially instable banks from the market. Our task in the previous 18 months was to make sure that we clear the uh, log jam and some of the problems were resolved. However, the overall worsening of the economic situation influenced the banks that experienced challenges. So for us right now, it is important to act proactively, and that will require an improvement in the supervision system. Um, one internal challenge to banking supervision is the transition of this resolution work, uh, uh, bringing this resolution work to a new level of the past uh, 18 months, uh, banking supervision mainly dealt with the already detected issues, so it was just a matter of how quickly you formalized uh, your findings and uh, proved them. Uh, today, it is also important to efficiently detect emerging problems, and this is the first priority now. Early detection helps problems not to become critical and not to become long overdue when the only solution would be license revocation or bank resolution, which is costly and highly undesirable. The need to create an early response system is nothing new for Russian banking supervision. There were attempts to introduce this system before. However, the effectiveness of these efforts is not sufficient yet. Therefore, one of the principal challenges for our banking supervision system is to ensure effective early response. I believe that we have enough capacity to make it happen. However, this will certainly require certain restructuring and uh, refocusing of our efforts. Uh, one of the elements of this early response framework is interactions with owners and managers of banks in order to remedy situations early on. If this is impossible for financial or other reasons, we are intent on applying mechanisms that will enable these institutions to find new investors. Implementation of these approaches approaches is expected to lead to rehabilitation and, reha and consolidation of the banking sector. Our performance in 2013-2014 indicates that uh, the root cause of the problems is not really bad risk management, but rather uh, really low 
quality of governance or a situation of counterproductive governance, as I would call it, when all business decision making is not focused on uh, profits or uh, customer service, but rather on the enrichment of beneficiaries and top managers. We believe that uh, uh, this comes from the feeling of impunity as well as a lack of accountability. Recently, enforcement in financial sphere has been uh, stepped up. We actively support this positive process uh, and we will do our utmost uh, uh, to, do, to ensure a situation where banks and bankers are only in, evoke positive connotations. One of the prerequisites for meeting these challenges is to ensure uh, banks' uh, transparency. Lack of transparency is the favorite strategy of uh, uh, dishonest businessmen, including bankers, when they conceal risks and problems from the public and from the regulators. This is why Additional scrutiny in our supervision activities are focused on uh, transactions that are non-transparent, have no uh, solid economic background, uh, intransparent uh, assets, as well as non-market assets and other such suspicious activities. Banking supervision attempts to demask or unmask such manipulations uh, to prevent uh, misreporting as well as concealment of uh, the real risks from the regulator. Special attention is paid by the Bank of Russia to the situation of with personal deposits. Uh, some banks are very aggressive in this market. Uh, this is the case not only in terms of uh, um, deposit growth and interest rates that look highly attractive. It also involves situations when aggressive behavior in the deposit market is coupled with lack of transparency, low quality of governance, uh, non-transparency of the assets in which the bank invests. I would like to underscore here that the challenging economic environment is not a reason to uh, make your supervision lax. Uh, uh, dishonest and intransparent banks are the first to experience problems. You can fool the regulator, but you cannot fool the economic reality all the time. The uh, absence of high quality and liquid assets precludes such banks to uh, uh, overcome even some of the lightest shocks. Uh, this is when all the concealed problems uh, re usually surface. Uh, Mm, misreported financial insolvency, unfortunately, is the own is the leading reason that leads to um, license revocation. From our experience and the experience of temporary management in banks that underwent uh, license revocations, uh, negative capital is usually detected in 65% of cases, and the uh, value of assets is uh, usually overreported by the former managers and owners uh, by, and this is again based on our statistics uh, over the past two years, by 58%. This is unacceptable. Last year, uh, Russia criminalized uh, misreporting of uh, financial data. Currently, we have um, uh, sent seven communications to the law enforcement uh, with regard to that uh, provision. I would I will talk about some statistics on license revocations. We revoked 145 licenses, um, 27 in 2015, but this is usually a measure of last resort for us once again. It's own, whenever economically feasible, we usually go for resolution and rehabilitation. Over the past two and a half years, uh, resolution decisions were made for 15 banks in total. Uh, we provided uh, 509 billion rubles on conditions of repayment for the purposes of rehabilitations. This has uh, uh, enabled banks uh, to ensure their sol solvency uh, on uh, indebtedness uh, totaling 802 billion rubles. Currently, um, there is a debate around how do we increase the efficiency of uh, rehabilitation, uh, whether or not it makes uh, sense to create a state bank for rehabilitation. We are against uh, state monopoly on rehabilitation. This is going to increase costs, and it will lead to increased uh, uh, 
ownership of government uh, in uh, in this market. Uh, it only has a place when the market fails or is not interested in rehabilitation activities. In those gap situations, uh, a Russian Capital Bank will be involved, uh, which will be placed with uh, a set of special authorities. Uh, mostly, rehabilitation is expected to uh, be implemented through private entities. Uh, uh, there will be asset valuation together with the government, uh, um, uh, formulation of proposals for a competition to involve uh, uh, new investors in order to save costs, as well as participation in the transfer of assets and uh, liabilities of the problem bank before the bankruptcy proceedings are initiated. Simultaneously, the Bank of Russia is contemplating the development of market approaches to financial rehabilitation of problem banks using private investor capital. One such mechanism could involve the provision of market-based loans from the Bank of Russia to potential investors. These loans could be provided in order to sustain the liquidity of the investor. It's not equity investment. Uh, potential investors may include banks that uh, meet the uh, scope of activities requirements as well as uh, financial stability requirements. Uh, uh, banks uh, that can uh, cover for risks using their own capital, the risks associated with the merger. Another actively debated issue recently is the condition of deposit insurance. Uh, uh, there is a lot of discussion about the sufficiency of the fund that we exist. Uh, deductibles, uh, the possibility of deductibles are uh, is uh, also discussed. I believe that our deposit insurance system is quite effectively, eff <coughs> functions quite effectively. It doesn't need any major uh, structuring. I will start with asset adequacy. Despite uh, recent uh, license cancellations, uh, despite the fact that recent license cancellations have led to a dwindling of uh, uh, assets in the fund, uh, there is still sufficient funds uh, under any circumstances. If necessary, the central bank will provide uh, loans. Uh, these loans will be remained when um, uh, the process of cancelling uh, or banks going out of business will slow down. So, as a matter of fact, uh, central bank only uh, provides a loan in order to close the cash flow gaps. So, what about deductibles? Uh, let me say straight away, the Bank of Russia is against the deductibles. The system for deposit insurance is the major precondition of uh, um, clients' confidence, uh, the economic benefits from deductibles are much less than the reputational losses that the banking sector will uh, incur. We know that there is the problem of so-called serial depositors, and this is the kind of people who place deposits in banks uh, um, that offer the best deposit rate, uh, understanding full well that uh, if the license is revoked from the bank, uh, that deposit will be uh, refunded by the central bank. Uh, this is a problem. We are not going to solve it at the expense of the citizens. We're going to uh, discourage banks from unfair competition in the deposit market. So the first measure to be taken is, the different, is to differentiate bank contributions to the fund depending on their deposit policy. This is a policy that will come into effect in about a month from now. One cannot expect citizens to be professional users of bank services. You don't expect them to follow banks' reports, to follow the, ra the rankings as well as business news. So in order to protect non-professional users of the services, we came about with this, we came with this idea to create a deposit insurance. So, a regulator is supposed to put out of business uh, banks that are in bad faith. We are not switching responsibility to the individuals. Our analysis shows that uh, banks uh, with cancelled uh, licenses in 2015, uh, in the run-up to the cancellation, were actively attracting deposits at a very high percent. And I'm now urging the banking community to be prepared to these stringent measures and to support us in our efforts to rehabilitate and improve the banking sector. I'm sure that the bona fide banks, just as we are highly interested in fair competition. We hope very much that the practical implementation of these approaches will make it possible to 
uh, meet these challenges of uh, bona fide banks. Now let me talk about the uh, uh, stop to uh, suspicious transactions in the Bank of Russia. Continues to pay uh, extra attention to the banks of this kind. We will try to implement restriction measures and. Uh, uh, revoke licenses. This year we have uh, exercised new powers uh, to revoke licenses which were provided by law including revocation licenses for regulative uh, violations in the area of uh, uh, revenues uh, that were received through criminal activities and the number of banks which are involved in these suspicious operations and transactions is uh, reduced. The issues uh, in this sphere are still quite relevant and our supervision in this area will be built on the implementation of risk-oriented approach. From the beginning of this year, the Bank of Russia has um, uh, given a certain number of communications in the two 10 owners uh, uh, as well as to replace 53 top managers of banks. And we will try to use the uh, accumulated experience of uh, re um, supervision uh, and uh, extend it to non-financial institutions. We also started uh, checks of uh, credit and non-credit institutions and this uh, the fact that we have checks in both types of institutions makes it possible to receive necessary data and respond appropriately. Uh, now a few words about the banking regulation sphere. There are two main issues in this sphere uh, that are in the focus of our attention. First is the overall strategy for exiting the crisis and the um, timeline for Basel standard implementation. As a result of communication with the banking community, we decided to uh, phase out uh, the easing measures, and we believe that our banking system is prepared for that, and we will do that in the course of the year. Now, a few years about the implementation of the international approaches. Uh, first of all, the Basel II and Basel III standards. We are confident that the current economic situation may not be used as an excuse to refuse or uh, extend the timeline for the implementation of Basel standards. The inter we, uh, n from the beginning of the year, will raise the minimal uh, adequacy capital level to 6%. We will continue to work with the banks, and very soon we will determine the deadlines and the range of banks, and those are going to be the biggest banks that will be covered by this requirement. This year, we will also publish our regulations that will make it possible for the largest Russian banks to apply Basel II approaches to the uh, assessment of credit risks, which is based on internal ratings, the so-called IRB approach. It is important to note that this year in Russia, we, for the first time, will conduct an assessment of banking regulation to see whether it meets the standards of the ba Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. Uh, on the whole, the regulation of credit institutions in Russia is based on Basel principles, but there are certain uh, specifics to the Russian Banking Center. These national approaches are often more conservative uh, than ba the Basel agreements, but we believe that the Basel standards will become the main foundation for all of our banks in the global financial system. In the banking regulation, we will pay um, more focused attention to the two special spheres. First is uh, um, working against all kinds of schemes that are used to conceal the losses and artificially um, increasing the capital. Uh, we plan to establish a number of indicators uh, that uh, credit institutions may use their capital via third parties in uh, the sources of their capital. And the second area is the reduction of risks uh, that are associated with the crediting of businesses by bank owners. These risks have been accumulated uh, uh, in, this, in the course of many years. They have uh, influenced the structure of the banking sector. And we know that a significant share of banks today serve the interests of specific financial and industrial groups. I'm not going to talk more about the development of financial markets because, as you know, last year was uh, the year when the central bank worked as a mega regulator. We worked closely with the insurance companies, with the non-government pension funds, with micro-crediting institutions. Our main task in this sphere is to improve regulation and supervision and to create conditions 
for the development of business in the sphere because the financial markets, uh, the develop, well-developed financial markets are one of the sources for economic growth. And now as I sum up, I would like to say that all of us, I believe, understand that there are difficult years ahead, both for the banks and the real sector of economy. At the beginning of my presentation, I said that a Russian economy will uh, not be able to uh, demonstrate a high growth rate um, without the structural reforms. And we have to accept the new economic reality. Uh, and our work, the stability and efficiency of the banking sector actually will influence the real economy. Um, and I would like to wish us all success in this work. I hope that the Congress that has opened today will become a platform to discuss uh, current problems, that you will be able to discuss these issues, most uh, acute issues, in an open manner, and I hope that we will be able to develop the most efficient ways to overcome these problems. Good luck to all of you, and thank you for your attention. Elvira Sahib Zagovna, thank you very much for inspiring further discussion. I'm sure this is a lot of food for thought. Uh, your presentation contained a lot of uh, elements that will be elaborated on. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this Congress uh, features a unique event. We are now going to uh, witness a ceremonial cancellation of uh, stamps. Uh, celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Bank of Russia. This ceremony is brought to you by Oleg Dukhanitsky from the Agency for Communications, as well as uh, uh, the governor of the Central Bank, uh, Elvira Nabi Ulina. So please take your uh, seats at the table and uh, let's proceed with the cancellation procedure. And I guess uh, a, some commentary is in order, uh, in order to illustrate the history and the story behind it. Uh, as you know, the central bank was uh, uh, founded in 1860 under the edict of Alexander II in order to promote trade, uh, simplify the monetary system, as well as to uh, su support the government treasury. Um, it. Uh, later evolved into uh, what is in Europe called the Bank of Banks uh, under the evolving two-tier banking model in Russia. Throughout the last century, the central bank was regarded as the largest creditor of uh, various credit institutions across the country. It was a key link in the financial supply chain of Russia. Today, it has a very special legal status of having been in having integrated the uh, Federal Service for Financial Markets, uh, it has begun to also execute oversight over fi uh, non-banking financial market situations, uh, organizations. It is responsible for price stabilization, economic stabilization, creation of a favorable economic climate, as well as uh, supervision of uh, both credit and non-credit uh, institutions in accordance with the Russian Federation. It is called upon to um, ensure the smooth operation of the national financial system. It is celebrating 155 years now. And I would like to also offer you a technical commentary on what is happening now. This sheet uh, is being canceled with a specially designed uh, stamp uh, that features uh, uh, today's date, uh, 4th of June, and the first day envelope is um, uh, signed by the cancellation procedure participants. Uh, uh, the uh, sheet was designed by uh, artist Ulyanovsky. There's 1,000 copies of these sheets in circulation that have been issued. Individuals will be able to purchase these sheets, and uh, these will be highly demanded by stamp collectors around the world. The Cancellation procedure is now over, and I would like to invite uh, to take the floor Oleg Duhovnitsky as well as you, Elvira Sahib Zadovna. Good morning, colleagues and friends. 
It is my pleasure to welcome you to this highly important and uh, stimulating forum. For us, the highlight of the day has certainly been the cancellation of this time, of this uh, miniature sheet uh, celebrating 155 years of the Central Bank. Uh, this is a joint effort uh, from Marka Publishing House and Goznak, the famous uh, um, enterprise, has. Uh, Mm, uh, produce this sheet, I'm sure. Uh, it will be a valuable addition to our stamp collectors in Russia, especially those collectors that uh, focus on the banking topic, and I'm sure that uh, these sheets will go to uh, all around the world and will be demanded. So I wish you a lot of success, and uh, those of you who are collecting stamps, I wish you the best of luck collecting them. And uh, we are also giving the our can <coughs> uh, uh, people who cancel the stamps uh, some memorial plaques. Thank you very much. The cancellation procedure is now over. Okay, we are now going to segue very logically to the first session of the day.